In Kubernetes, these are the terminology that you should know in order to understand the architecture of Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, you have clusters of VM, multiple VMs. These are called as pools. So within a Azure Kubernetes cluster, you have group of identical VMs which are deployed. So you might have VM1 over here, VM2 over here, VM3 over here. All of these are called as nodes. So Node is nothing but a virtual machine deployed in Kubernetes. Group of nodes with identical configuration are called as pools. Within pool, you have nodes. These are individual VM running containerized application. So these are the exact VMs which are running these containers. Inside these VMs, you have single instance of an application. A pod can contain multiple containers. A pod is nothing but it is an instance of an application. You might be running app one over here, app two over here. Or you might be running this app one across multiple pods. That is also possible. Within a pod, you have multiple containers which are deployed. Okay. So deployment is nothing but one or more identical pods managed by Kubernetes. So this is nothing but a YAML file. This YAML file uh, basically allows you to deploy these containers and how these containers will be configured within the pod. So within a pod, you can have one container or you might have multiple containers deployed within a single pod. Manifest is again the same YAML file that we are talking about. This is the file which defines the steps what needs to be taken in order to deploy the application within the container. For example, install Nginx. After that, expose the public IP. Then you will basically define all the steps what are required to run this container. You might deploy .NET on one of the container. You might deploy Node.js on another container. So all of this is defined within this pod. So you have pools, which is cluster of VMs. Inside this, you have node. One VM is called as the node. You have a deployment file, a YAML file that is created, which is used to instruct what you need to deploy in a pod. Pod is nothing but it is a combination of multiple containers. So this is called as pod. These are the terminologies that you should know before you start working with AKS. AKS architecture, uh, how do you basically work with AKS? So you have Azure Virtual Network on the left hand side. Azure Network Interface is attached to your virtual machine. So this is a NIC card which is attached to your VM. This talks to Kube Proxy. This Kube Proxy helps you in networking. So all of your networking connections are happening by using this Kube Proxy. So it allows you to run those uh, networking connections. If you want to add storage to your AKS cluster, you can use Azure Disk or Azure file shares, both can be used. Now, if you want to deploy anything to a container, you can talk to it by using a command or agent called kubelet agent. So you talk to this agent. So you go to Azure portal and you can use Azure dash or CLI. And you can basically talk to this kubelet agent. This agent talks to container runtime. Container runtime is nothing but it has all of the container uh, runtime details which are required. For example, .NET will require different container runtime. It has all of the dependencies, DLL files, everything packaged with this. Okay, so this container runtime allows you to deploy those applications onto the containers. Now these containers, if they need to store any data, it can be stored in Azure Disk or in Azure Files. We can store the data in any of these areas. If you talk about networking, in AKS, you have different networking you can connect to. If you want to connect to internal traffic, you can have a cluster IP assigned. So this cluster IP will allow you to talk to multiple containers within the pod. So you can talk to multiple containers within the pod. If you have any incoming direct traffic, which is coming to your node, you can also connect to that specific node on a certain port. So you can define any traffic which is coming into your uh, pods you can basically uh, define a certain port that you want to connect to. So one pod might be connecting on a certain port. Another pod might be connecting on some other port or some other port. If you have non-direct traffic, let's say any traffic coming from the internet and you want to redirect the traffic, you can also leverage load balancer with this. You can add a load balancer and you can have an AKS node connecting on different port. This port might be connecting on 6233. This might be connecting on 8737. 
So you can have different nodes connecting your different port by using this load balancer. Pod runs an instance of your application. So your pod runs an instance of your app over here. Services group pods together to provide network connectivity. All of your pods are grouped together to provide network connections. Cluster IP provides internal traffic access. So between pods, if you want to communicate, you can use cluster IP. Node port provides mapping of our incoming direct traffic. This node port defines what port you are connecting on. Load balancer has external IP address. If you're connecting from the internet, you can basically connect to this load balancer and can then redirect the traffic to your backend install. Thank you.